All righty, guys, we're back for Flying Tempo, and this is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, this was a suggestion over in the Discord. Thank you so much for the suggestion. It's going to be a fun one. It was essentially to play Prof's Eidetic Memory with Steam Core Scholar. We got some new cards packed in too, like Duels to the Mind, for example, and Three Steps Ahead made the cut as well as a two of. What the heck do all these cards do? Well, Duelist of the Mind. We have all four of them. A two mana, Flying Vigilance. Its toughness is three. Okay, and its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So that's interesting to say the least. I think that could potentially be explosive. Also has a bottom ability. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this ability triggers only once each turn. Well, how the heck do we commit a crime? While targeting opponents, anything they control, and or cards in their graveyards is a crime. In other words, very easy, huh? So, Prof's Eidetic Memory is a 2-mana legendary enchantment. When it ETBs, you draw a card. Nice. You have no maximum hand size. Nice. But then also, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've drawn more than one card this turn, you put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature you control where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn minus one. So every card past the first is a plus one plus one counter that you slam onto one of your flying creatures? Okay, sounds good to me, huh? Now Steam Core Scholar here. All four of these as well. This is a three mana two two flying vigilance. When it ETBs, you draw two cards. Then you discard two cards unless you discard an instant sorcery or creature with flying. Very nice, guys. So uh, yeah, this is going to do a thing, I would say. Not three steps ahead, like I like I said, the last new card here. Or no, I didn't say the last new card. But it is the last new card. Anyway, so this is a one blue mana instant speed, but it has spree, so you choose one or more additional costs. So for the additional cost of one and a blue, you can counter target spell. For the additional cost of three, you can create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. Honestly, I think you're going to activate that more than you would think. And then the bottom ability here for the additional cost of two... You draw two cards, then discard a card. So it fits that draw theme nicely. Yeah, seems good, man. I really like cards that have a lot of utility, and this card just screams utility to me. So some other flying creatures that we have packed in is Welcoming Vampire made the cut as a one of, uh, fitting that draw theme, fitting that flying theme. Yep, makes sense to me. Same concept with Ledger Shredder. That connive is going to go the extra mile, and then also the plus one, plus one counters on this could be really good too, because we also, yeah, kind of have that plus one, plus one counter theme with the eidetic memory, as well as the connive, as well as ingenious prodigy, and all of that works well with the serum snare here. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If that permanent is mana value three or less, you proliferate. Very nice. So what are some other ways we can draw in the build to go ahead and buff up that duelist? While Faithful Mending made the cut, this is also not a terrible one to go ahead and discard to all these other discard abilities, right? Because it has flashback for one, a white, and a blue. So I have Meeting of Minds. It has that Convoke and then draw two cards. So our creatures can help cast this. That happens to be pretty good when you can hold this open after a swing with your Vigilant creatures. Now the tempo side of things, we also have a couple Soul Partitions. Four Fading Hopes, a couple slip out the backs as well, all of these working well with the crime side of the Duelist of the Mind. Also have Spell Pierced, I'm interesting, interested to see if this is going to do a thing, <laughs> as every now and then we hit something really, really good with the Spell Pierce. And you know what I want to hit with it today? World Soul's Rage. Oh, buddy, would that be good. Uh, and that's that, we got Ingenious Prodigy, did I go over this yet? So this fits the plus one plus one counter theme and also the draw theme too, because at the beginning of our upkeep, we can remove a counter from it to draw an additional card. So that'll be interesting. Restless Anchorage made the cut over here in the mana base as well as Seat of the Empire and Soaring City. Very much just splashing white in this blue build, huh? Okay, we'll go ahead and save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. In the meantime, let's go ahead, take it into some ranked and see how we do. right into that first game guys let's go there must be a ton of people playing right now okay what am i expecting from the build 
Ooh, well, this first hand might be tricky. Well, maybe not. Maybe... I'd like to keep that protection open. Ona goes first. Okay, we're going to try this. I don't think we can complain too much right away here. Okay, anyways, what am I expecting from the build? No idea. Like, we ha we've had a lot of success with tempo in the past. We've had a lot of success with flyers in the past as well. Okay, Beast Caller. Do you guys think if we play Duelist of the Mind that it just gets taken out by, like, a fight spell right away? Or, or Burn. They do have red over there. All right, we'll try it. There's no guarantee that we see a third mana off the top. If we had a third mana in hand, maybe I would have waited till turn three for the duelist um, and just played the eidetic memory for the turn. It's gonna be Trailblazer. Oh, buddy, I have no idea what you do. When it ETBs, they get uh, something. No blocks. Oh, add one mana of any color. Okay. Okay. They can keep their hand nice and stocked up with this card. Also has plot. Oh, I got to try that one out. All right. So we're going to start with the, with the memory. See if we can draw a land. That would be ideal here. We do have 23 mana packed in, I believe. Nice. All right. We do see a blue source. So we have slip out the back as protection or fading hope as tempo. And three steps ahead. Two of those in hand isn't great. I, and like keeping the spell pierce open is fine too, I suppose. I guess we'll see what happens. It might be okay to like block their biggest thing and then slip out the back. Because these don't have trample or anything. Econoclast. Okay. Nice hasty creature. We could bounce the beast caller. That's a 4-3. Taking 8 is pretty bad. We should... Fading Hope. We don't want to block with that duelist either. Fading Hope the beast caller. Uh, oh, we do get that draw. It's too bad it doesn't boost the toughness, huh? Ledger Shredder. All right. The discard is going to be one of these three steps ahead, I would suppose. And then maybe the next discard will be the Spell Pierce. Welcoming Vampire. I don't mind seeing all these, but it kind of feels like we're not going to get a chance to get these on the board. You know what I mean? So I'm going to send that. I, I think that's a little bit too slow for right now. So we have that trade into the Trailblazer. Blazer. I wonder if that's worthwhile. I'm going to say no for now. They drop the Concede. Okay. I think that was heavily leaning towards them. <laughs> I mean, very well, huh? Wait a minute. We weren't at five already, right? I know we were taking four that turn, but... What were we... What? What happened there? Did it, like... Did it bug out when they dropped the concede, maybe? Oh, Duelist of the Mind off the top. All right, guys. I mean, I, I'll take the victory. Victories are hard to come by, but that totally felt like it was leaning towards the opponent. At some point, maybe we could have started to establish stronger blockers with the extra counters from the memory. But other than that, I feel like we weren't drawing that well. Like, next turn, we were going to have the Duelist play and then just one open mana, too. So, oh, that's very noteworthy. We might want to talk about going up to 24 mana. Maybe I got a little greedy only having 23 in here. At least I think I only have 23. Okay, here we go. We got three in the opener. Now, 23 makes sense because, yeah, we're drawing so much. We're filtering out so much. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me still. Opponent goes first. Alright. See nothing wrong with this hand either. Yeah, hopefully getting some uh, good blockers down is enough. For now. Doing in with the Swiss Spear. Okay. I can't I I think the opponent was lagging. That's what it kind of felt like, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, without the memory, we're not putting counters onto these. 
Going for... Going for the burn for the turn. Down to 14. I mean, honestly, it could... It could be a lot worse. Alright, Duelists, let's see if you can actually successfully block this Swift Spear. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be Monstrous Rage, but it's probably worth the block, right? Squee! Alright, we can block here. We don't, we don't kill anything, but, I mean, we block. That counts for something, right? So, Steam Core Scholar, also, like, getting all these Vigilant creatures down. More mana is not bad at all. A faithful mending that life gain will be good i think it's going to be scholar for the turn just more creatures makes sense to me okay i'm okay with actually just ditching the land that we just saw i'm gonna decline because once we get the fourth mana on the board like we're totally fine okay swing for three we'll see if we can actually start the tempo game Godric, Ooh, they still have one open mana. Okay. We'll have one open mana. We could trade into Squee. We could attempt the Swift Spear block. Squee's a problem, especially when paired with the Godric, so I think we'll attempt the trade, block the Swift Spear, and just hope that that last mana isn't anything fancy. Unfortunately, it is very likely something, huh? It usually is. Yeah, monstrous rage. We still had a good block into the Swiss Spear, but we took a whole bunch of damage there. Okay, okay. So if we go Duelist, we have... Faithful Mending available. We might get some good blocks, but I think that's game. Other than that, we can't... We don't have enough tempo here. To prevent this from happening. On the swing, we have two Serum Snares. We could bounce you, you. We're down to three. They can power up Foundry for the turn and not worry about anything. Or maybe they just full swing without powering up Foundry. Or it could just be a Lightning Strike off the top too. Okay, so we do the fun thing then. We get the Duelist down and we'll keep the Faithful Mending open. We'll go back up to five. And maybe actually have some key blocks here that can actually trade into some things, right? Uh, that's definitely the most fun. Oh, make sure we still swing because of the Vigilance, too. And maybe the opponent only has land in hand, too. If we draw two... Oh, yeah. This is going to be... This is going to be pretty difficult to have this Duelist of the Mind be an effective blocker, huh? We go back up to five... Uh, Godric gets into the air regardless because of the squeeze swing, right? So we start with the Faithful Mending. Yeah, it does look like this deck is going to eat up a lot of mana. We can discard the other Faithful Mending and one of the Serum Snares as well. So now we have a successful block into the Foundry. And the Swiss Spear. And this still could be... This still could be a card. Either way, if we block their biggest things, uh, seven damage is still getting through. So we have the fun blocks here where they, the blocks actually matter. Well, the blocks don't matter. I'm saying I'm choosing the creatures that actually um, that actually die from the blocks. There we go. GG opponent. Ooh, buddy. I mean, going up against mono red in general is always going to be tricky. Everything in our hand kind of felt a little messy, right? A little out of order. Maybe a little expensive, actually, too. All of that is noteworthy for the final thoughts of the video. All right, opponent, what you bringing to the table, buddy? Opponent goes first, huh? Okay. All right, I can't complain about this. Totally a hand we don't mind having. Maybe we... No, I was going to say, maybe we want... Okay, oh. The memory. Beautiful. Okay. I was going to say, maybe we want all four of these, but it is legendary. So, it might be tricky. There might be turns where you don't mind playing one and then having 
having to get rid of the other one because you still get the draw from the ETB, but... Oh, there's the second one. Okay, okay. Well, this is going to be tricky, isn't it? We're going to have a rough time against these mono red matches. I think we're going to have to save our tempo open. Just Serum Snare the Feldon on the swing. Mana flips next turn. Third mana comes down. Um, if we have Duelist block Kimano and we have the Duelist setting up at least, I guess. I, I don't really know. What would we rather do here? Yeah, the Serum Snare might be a little bit too expensive, a little bit too greedy. Like, we got a lot of different themes packed into the build. Down to 15. I'd say it's worth the attempted block. If they got the Monstrous Rage, they're going to activate it whether we block or not. Um, at that point, it's Monstrous Rage for our Duelist, and we're taking three less damage. Right? I mean, and you have to assume that it's something from Mono Red. You really do. And we're just accepting that uh, in this block. Monstrous Rage. What are you doing there, buddy? Hey, what are you doing? Working for the opponents. All right, so Steam Core Scholar is available. Serum Snare is available. Flip out the back. It's gonna be tough, guys. This is gonna be really, really tough. Uh, this is only our third turn, and we are sweating big time. We don't even have a successful chump into the Kamano. Like, the trample's still going to slip through. All right. Unfortunately, if we... One second, opponent. What could we find on the Steam Core? Like, at, at the very least, maybe we'll have a chump into, like, a surprise Godric next turn. It would be a 4-4 Godric. So let's go Steam Core. Just see what we see. It, it does look like we're going to have a really hard time keeping creatures on the board, especially with when uh, aggro is just pushing through so effectively. Okay, Phoenix Chick. So we do have a trade into the Phoenix Chick, potentially, right? Play with fire, swing for eight, and that's that's got to be it, dude, right? Oh, for sure. Another Steam Core <laughs> Scholar. Well, I'll go ahead and play that. Man, I feel like we had a lot in hand, but the three land is pretty bad. You can discard the mending here. A lot of synergies. We're going to have to talk about 24 mana, maybe mid-video too, right? We're 17 minutes in. How much do we want to hit a land drop every single turn? Um, All the time. What do we drop? What do we drop for the 24th land? Yeah, very rare that we changed the deck list mid-video. Very rare. I think we've done it like twice before on the channel. But I think we're I think we're gonna have to, especially if we're gonna see some more mono red too. We're definitely gonna need well, uh, first of all, first of all, we only had three turns there anyways, right? No, no, no. We did get our fourth turn, we just didn't have our fourth mana. Yeah. Okay. The serum snare. It's kind of just like sticking in our hand a little bit more than I would like. I'm going to drop that down. Actually, I'm going to drop that down to one. Go up another soul partition for more. More of a. Uh, catch anything. I guess technically Serum Snare is a catch anything tempo play as well. If we go up that extra soul partition, then I, I feel comfortable being able to go up the extra planes. At that point, too, if we want more removal, we could go up the extra seat of the Empire, too, right? I don't think the Legends is going to hold us up as often, and since I was on the fence already about 23, then it's kind of like having 23, but now just an extra utility piece, right? How do you feel about that? Uh, I, I still want to see Serum Snare do a thing, though, so let's go 2 and 2, like that. Yeah, that's fine. So we dropped a Serum Snare, we went up AC to the Empire. Is that going to help us against Mono Red? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'll feel more comfortable now. 
it's just based on those games i kind of just feel like the deck is going to want to see mana every turn and even when we were drawing a lot even when we were trading out we weren't seeing extra which kind of felt a little strange maybe a little unlucky but at the same time when we're not trading out we're still going to want to see mana every single turn i think so 24 is a good bet okay so we can uh successfully start with the wastes here no worries turn two shredders pretty good going first is excellent all right, right into Shredder and hope that Lightning Strike doesn't take care of it before we can start getting Connives off. Conniving Shredders against Mono Red is really good. Maybe play with Fire. And then play with Fire. Wow, doubling down on the play with Fires here. Um, I want to get my turn three. I want to try three steps ahead today too unfortunately it's going to be the land shredder dies either way even even if we get the uh counter connive on it in the swiss spirit uh two play with fires for one card is pretty good for us man okay we get to keep seat of the empire keeping fading hope open could be good for the turn is it actually going to be the eidetic memory finally All right, memories on the board. Turn three. Squee. Hi, Squee. As soon as Squee hits, I'm going to go ahead and Fading Hope before they get a chance to swing with it. Good tempo play, finally, right? List of the mind. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with keeping that on top, especially if we go Duelist of the Mind Serum Snare. Get the extra counter. Two, three steps ahead. I guess Steam Core Scholar makes more sense. Maybe keep the Seat of the Empire as utility for now. Yeah, Steam Core Scholar makes more sense. Because we draw two as well. Okay, Faithful Mending can be discarded successfully. And we still have the flashback. All right, we get two counters. A 4-4 four, four versus Mono Red is pretty good. It blocks the Squee really nicely. And now we're talking, guys. Now we got the ball rolling a little bit. A revenge against Mono Red would feel awesome. So they could go... Let's see, let's see. We isn't the best bet for the turn unless they also, like, slam a mountain on the board and have, like, a monstrous rage open too, right? Scoundrel. Wonder if it's treasure then. Treasure. Still got two mana open then. Phoenix check. Save the treasure for next turn, maybe. So they go Witch Stalker Frenzy. So they did the extra treasure to make sure that they had the three creatures on the board for the frenzy. That was a great turn for the opponent, guys. And unfortunately, now we're in trouble again. Um. I guess we'll double down on Duelist of the Mind. They're going to be zero threes on the opponent's turn. Because we're not drawing any extra here. But, like, getting them both down should be, should be pretty good, right? Oh, that Witch Stalker Frenzy was right on time. This is, this is rough, guys. If we go... We actually have, like, the Faithful Mending play next turn. We'll be able to get counters on at least one of these, so it can start trading into some of these creatures more effectively. Going, like, one Duelist of the Mind and then having Serum Snare um, on their turn. Well, if we do Serum Snare on our turn, we would have drawn and discarded off the Duelist. And then we would have gotten one counter from the memory. That would have been a 1-4. So I guess it could have blocked like one of these guys. Let's hope that last card in hand is not a monstrous rage, huh? We're going to be taking three here. If it's like... Okay, okay. Down to eight. We are alive. Bell Pierce could be good. 
the back. We want to, if we do any drawing, we want to do it before. If we find a fifth mana, we could start with Serum Snare, Crime on both of the duelists. What do we want to bounce? Probably the Squee because it's costing them three mana. This is probably pretty good because we have a good chance of seeing mana off the top then. So do this before combat, of course, because we want the... Okay, Soul Partition is not bad, actually, is it? Um, maybe I end up getting rid of the Spell Pierce then. Okay. Ledger Shredder is also not bad. They're not land, though, but at least we have Spell Pierce now, right? We can Spell Pierce on their turn, too. Okay. Okay. Let's let's ditch the slip out the back because I want to see the three steps ahead do something today too. Okay. Nothing to proliferate, unfortunately. We're gonna have to keep the soul partition open for their turn. Both of these have vigilance. We have a great swing. Alright. Passes back to the opponent. This is a two five, bro. Phoenix check, yep, and it's probably Squee at that point. Okie dokies, and we're going to hit that Squee before the attack. Right? Or do we want to surprise them? No, 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 no. No. Yeah, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to take this action, too. I'm looking for land. Fading Hope's good. I'll ditch the Shredder, I suppose. Land! All right. Wait, do we still need the land? Now we don't need the land. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did the we needed the land last turn. But at least squeeze out of the equation if they full swing here. They still still get three damage through, but we get to take out two important creatures. Uh Swiss Spear. And one of the flyers can come back easily. I guess it'll be Scoundrel then. For now. My face. Okay, prodigy, huh? Okay. So now we start with Faithful Mending, because we'll gain two. We have the Fading Hope open here, too. Okay, so this is going to be tapped land, unfortunately, and I don't mind the Scholar at all. So discard two cards. It's going to be Coast and Prodigy, I would say. And we could go, we have eight on the board. We could go Fading Hope now on the token, right? We'll go two more, then we get uh, two more from the, wait, that's lethal damage, isn't it? It should be. Because we're getting a whole bunch of counters from this memory. Three steps ahead, number two. Faithful Mending. Beautiful, beautiful. Scry that to the bottom, and we have 12 on the board already. That is a huge swing from us, man. That's what the deck is trying to do. That felt great. Now, we had to go first, right? That was going first against Mono Red was huge for us. Because we got pretty low on life total, too. The two life on the Faithful Mending doesn't go nearly as far as you would expect. About 28 minutes in, guys, we totally have time for one or two more games. Let's keep the ball rolling. Yeah, we got to see a lot of the tempo in that one. And actually, we had a lot of decisions to make every single turn. At some point, too. Yeah, seeing mana every turn seems really important in here, doesn't it? I don't think we want 25, though. But I do like the decision to change to uh, 24, for sure. When it goes first, drops an island. We'll drop our Restless Anchorage. Mm-hmm. Redder, all right. Where else do we see Shredder nowadays? Um, mini reanimator, right? All right, we'll get the duelist down. We have a turn three steam core scholar. Okay. So does it land? 
unlikely, right? I think I'd rather go for Faithful Mending. This is a really bad counter for them. And it buffs our Duelist quite nicely to get around the three butt on the Shredder. And then we also get to keep the uh, Slip at the Back available. I'm going to get rid of one of the Meeting of Minds. Hopefully that's not a mistake. And then... Do I need the fourth mana right now with 24 in here and all these extra draws? I think we'll be okay. One meeting, one island, faithful mending, in the grave, slip out the back available. I think we will slip out the back if they attempt a fading hope too. I think getting that extra counter on Duelist wouldn't be terrible. It's gonna be Thirst for Discovery. The Shredder making an appearance in mono blue potentially here. Oh, it is in fact a mirror match. Well, kind of, sort of, right? All right. Well, at that point, we're probably in trouble, and I'm not. I'm not too certain that I should have been. Well, I don't want to do this. So. So, okay. We'll try the Scholar. I don't know if these memory decks usually run counters. Okay, there's a fourth. Uh, counter spells, I should say. Soul Partition should be pretty good with the Shredder. Maybe we just keep that slip out the back open still and play the Scholar now. I don't know if these usually run counter spells. I'm assuming they do. Scholar is not going to make it. Okay, well, stuff slip out the back available. I think we just save it. Well, of course we save it, but... Yeah, the swing's not worth it at all. They were tapped out anyways, and it was an easy-peasy block. Adi Jin, huh? Dude, we're in trouble. So, Mono Blue Memory. Still no great swing. Still not having a use for the slip out the back, unfortunately. Welcoming Vampire. Yeah, there's not too many three mana cards, but the three mana cards really feel like they hold this up a little bit. We find a If we find a land off like Faithful Mending, that would be a pretty good counter at, at this point, though, right? They still have two mana open, and the Hottie Jin's making their other... Um, making everything cheaper so what are the odds that that anything lands this turn and what do we not mind get eating the counter probably the welcoming vampire at that point what welcoming vampire does if it does land is it sets up really nicely for the scholar essentially like draw three off a scholar so we got the setup we still have slip out the back available not terrible guys really isn't Okay, they got the Thirst for Discovery. So when you phase out, um, treat it as though they don't exist until the start of their controller's next turn. I wanted to read that just to uh, refresh my memory. Okay. They're going, going for a nice large hand here. Oh, they're not discarding a basic though. They want to buff the djinn. Still got six cards in hand. Okay, sleight of hand. Another memory. And yeah, they, their hand has to be stocked full. Sorry, opponent. I don't know how long that was holding up on me. Has to be stocked full of counter spells at this point if it's just mono blue. Actually, I really like memory for mono blue. Pretty sick. All right, so. I'd want the counter on the duelist, I suppose. So we'll block while we can. We'll see if uh, slip out the back lands. If it's a counter, we lose two cards for one of theirs. We take eight. Countering the slip out the back would be very beneficial for them, right? Losing the duelist that way. Okay, never mind. We're going to take eight for now. I mean... 
any amount of extra tempo in our hand, we have to assume uh, eats a counter or they have their own tempo available at this point, right? Faithful Mending. So if we go Faithful Mending, see a land, we'll have Steam Core Scholar 2, and it's safer to go Faithful Mending first. Because if they counter this, it's not a terrible counter. And then we'll have Soul Partition as well. We do see a land. Uh, we're going to be struggling with the meeting of the minds, I would say. So I want to keep the slip out the back, but how much is this actually going to do? You could always slip out the back their own hottie gin when it comes time. Right? This is tough, man. I'm going to go meeting and slip and play the land and try the scholar. See what happens here. This would be a really good counter for them. We can have a really good counter, Shredder, doing a thing for the turn too, since we're doing multiple things. We have to we have to know that the counter spell's coming. It's just that the faithful mending was a really bad counter for them, so they let it go through. Because we'll draw three here and hopefully just discard one. To restock our hand a little bit, which is one of the reasons why we want the uh why we discarded the meeting. They actually let it go. I wonder what's in hand. Fading Hope, Land, Duelist. Uh, all this extra tempo might be better than the other Duelist, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, they could all get countered easily anyways. Okay, yeah, I'm going to keep all of the tempo... Everything in hand has the chance of getting countered regardless. Let's see if they trade. Losing the Shredder uh, this turn would be pretty good for us. Okay, they're drawing even more, guys. This is their fourth thirst for discovery. If they buff the Shredder, it still dies to the... Uh, it still dies to the block. Since we are 6-3. That's a worthwhile trade. It's a two mana card for a two mana card. And right now, I think their Shredder is giving them a lot more value than our Duelist. Oh, Duelist of the Mind. There they go. All right, a little bit of a different version of Mono Blue. We can't complain too much. Yeah, it's definitely like a mirror match. Except we got the Splash of White. Yeah, lucky, luckily enough, we have Flyers in the air for the Hottie Gin. Unless they go, unless they go block, and then fading hope, fading hope. They have three mana available still. I don't think we die next turn, but I guess we could, because everything's so cheap for the opponent. Duelist, and then they're gonna commit some crimes. Right up the alley of mono blue. Yeah, because they they draw a discard. Yeah, dude. If it is double fading hope, we could die here, I think. I totally believe that. I don't know what else they would have to see since they already played all of their thirst for discovery. Because if it was like... Okay. Yeah, what the heck, I'll take the 10. This is going to be a really tough uphill battle regardless. I, I just, I'd rather keep my creatures on the board for now. An Edger Shredder. Dude. This version of Mono Blue looks super scary though, doesn't it? Alright. Maybe I shouldn't have accepted that trade with the Duelist of the Mind. I still feel like their Shredder was doing more than it, but now that we, now that we have open mana... And we actually have enough uh, tempo in hand. Kind of feels bad, doesn't it? All right. We will attempt Fading Hope number one. Let the counter drop and then Soul Partition. I think Soul Partition on the Djinn is much better because they'd have to pay five to get it back down. Potentially only have one island open at that point too. Somewhere along this game, I probably missed some value somewhere, right? There's been a lot of decisions in this one. 
Three steps ahead. All right. Well, the opponent's showcasing the goods. That's good, at least. They go for the counter on that, and they do tap out here, too. So uh, I believe that the soul partition is better than the fading hope, even though the fading hope gets us the scry. This is still pretty good. We do it while they're tapped out. Shredder just totally, totally amazing. Actually, I should have played my own Shredder, right? But now, but then we wouldn't have the Faithful Mending open if we wanted. We don't even have a good swing, though. Faithful Mending and Fading Hope open. One, two. Shredder could have drawn. Shredder could have gotten a counter. We would have drawn off the Welcoming Vampire. Okay, I think that, I think that's an... That was just an oopsie daisies. Ooh, Steam Core. Okay, we have Fading Hope available. No great swings. End turn. Yeah, so we could have gotten a counter on the Shredder as well, potentially. I, The original plan wasn't even to play the Shredder, but then I thought about it a little bit, and it made sense to me. Sleight of hand. Maybe find an extra island so they can keep an island open for their five-mana hottie gen. Or just find a second hottie gen, too. It is, in fact, a second hottie gen. Nedger Shredder doing a thing. Mm, I don't care about the plus one, plus one counter. I'd rather, I'd rather have the other Steam Core to dig further through the deck. Speaking of digging further through the deck, guys, the opponent only has 25 cards remaining in their list. They have officially drawn 12 more cards than I. <laughs> okay. Um, probably a counter on the duelist. That makes sense. Yep. What do we want to tempo? What do we want to attempt to tempo out their shredder? And take. And go double block, lose the welcoming vampire. Let's see what happens to the Fading Hope first. And if we go Shredder, they might tap out this turn. Allowing us to do whatever we need. Spell Pierce, and they're still not tapped out, unfortunately. And that's a crime, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We still have the double block into the Duelist, which we should do. But if they commit another crime, both of our creatures die. But they tap out? question mark? I, dude, we're losing a lot of value. Oh, no. Fading hope. Okay, well, that's not as bad. That's not as bad as I, I was thinking. Oh, also, also, this is activate only once each turn for the draw on this, too, so, okay, that's good, at least. Okay, land. So, we start with scholar number one. We're in so much trouble. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, Prodigy isn't bad. Um, Decline. We're going to ditch these islands. We're just going to play the second Scholar. This would have been a great game to get memory on the board, huh? Both of our Shredders do a thing, but they just have these big old beefy creatures that uh, we're going to really struggle against here. Uh, second Shredder is actually better than the Prodigy. Prodigy gives us extra value every turn. Another. Okay. I mean, yeah, one Shredder. We don't want to discard two of these then. I guess we'll keep the island to discard two, the, the Faithful Mending or something, right? No great swings. We're going to be forced to chump here. All they need is a little bit of tempo as we're at three. Flow of Knowledge. All right, dude, just go on mono blue. The opponent's deck looks really good, doesn't it? And Hadi Jin just kind of puts on that extra pressure that maybe this deck is looking for, actually. Maybe going Azorus wasn't the greatest of ideas. If the Splash of White hasn't been doing as much as I thought it would, um, mainly to squeeze that Faithful Mending in and then also like an, some extra utility, especially like Restless Anchorage too, though. All right, so if we go up to three, either way, it doesn't matter, so we'll get rid of the island. No matter what, we're going to be forced to block all of their creatures. So even if we get Shredder up to a 3-5, it, it all dies anyways. Oh, that was a Fading Hope onto the Shredder anyways. So it really, really doesn't matter. They just full swing, 
good game opponent very nice very great tempo look at their board oh buddy really impressive actually maybe we need a big thing to draw additional cards in here i kind of like imagined the list to kind of like to filter through effectively every turn to like successfully draw like three to four cards on the turn regardless of a card actually saying hey draw four cards right you know just having multiple cards that say draw two cards and stuff like that didn't really feel like it did that today though did it so let's go ahead go over the deck list again talk about talk about what we saw in those games especially and unfortunately right now guys there is more mono red than there has ever been a uh, period bro like these this last week since the release especially everyone really wants to try out the slick shot uh and slick shot has been pretty good so far all right here's the deck list again guys so um the memory the scholar the duelist that was the main that's the core here that we were going for i decided to splash white we have Anchorage then. We have Utility with Seat of the Empire. We have Life Gain and Extra Draw on Faithful Mending. Uh, and we have Extra Tempo with Soul Partition as well. And then I guess uh, just like fitting the extra theme with the Welcoming Vampire. As we saw in the opponent's list though, Mono Blue just might be the way to go. And you're going to have like more consistent like mana base at that point too. Just less less utility overall, but then more counter spells. Which of course I'm never really comfortable playing counter spells anyways. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that wouldn't be the route that we wanted to take for this list. You know what I mean? Everything felt really expensive all the time. I would definitely keep it at 24, not the original 23. The Prodigy was interesting. Didn't It didn't do anything today, right? We just ended up discarding this. Really wanted it to do a thing. Fits the whole counter theme. Maybe the deck's trying to do too much all at once, right? We have a we have a flying theme, a plus one plus one counter theme, and we have like the draw theme. We got like three different themes. We're we're trying to draw a lot, we're trying to slam counters, and we're trying to fly into the opponent. Uh, but they should like meld together quite nicely, especially with how the deck is set up to you. Maybe it's just not the time for this uh, specific style of build we get run over no matter what we play we get run over really fast from mono red so what are what are our key things to help us against mono red and boros as well of course but uh right now i don't think i've seen boros since the new set release mostly just been mono red i'm, I'm not 100 percent certain don't quote me on that but i think i think people are just trying out the slick shot huh We've seen some gruel versions of the slick shot list too. All of that is just really, really explosive, really fast. What what it's trying to do is it's trying to get you to sweat by the time you drop your third mana and you're just like, I'm dead next turn. There's nothing I can do, you know? So what what are we doing in here to prevent that? Not a lot, man. Outside of just drawing really well and actually going first, what would you guys add or take out? I'm trying to think of like how to improve it, but... I think this might already be the peak of this particular version. And then we just label it super jank, huh? Maybe some more early stuff, but like, what would we do early on? The three steps ahead even seem pretty slow. And like, there were many moments where we were just kind of like, oh, wow, we can't do two things on one turn. Even though like, look at this, we don't have too many three mana cards. Maybe dropping the vampire and going up another soul partition for more... Um... More crimes, right? Yeah, more tempo. Okay. That's just more two mana cards that affects our curve. And our curve is already pretty uh, iffy, right? We're actually looking at nine one drops and kind of sort of seven three drops. So I guess I guess the curve as it is is curving out nicely enough. Oh, meeting in the mines was also just another one of those cards where we ended up discarding it a lot too man do we got to say more testing required or do we got to say this was one heck of a learning experience i'm not i'm not 100 percent certain guys i know one thing for sure for sure this version of the list is going to be janky regardless so what do we want to do next time what do we do when we revisit the whole memory 
uh, Steam Core Duelist concept. I really liked what the opponent was doing in that last one. With the Haughty Jin. Maybe we could do that. But I'd rather like, I'd rather try something. Maybe like, is it? Is it would be more my flavor. Oh, guys, hey, if you made it this far into the video, by the way, y'all are champions for real. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing here? Thank you so much. <laughs> also, uh, check out that description where we got that Discord link, uh, as well as that Patreon link, too, if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. This was a Discord suggestion, but unfortunately, I am getting pretty backed up on the suggestions, and I, I tr do my dandiest to get around to all of them, but some of them fall through the cracks uh, every now and then. So if you want your suggestion guaranteed... On the channel that patreon is the best way to do that and the serum snare yeah the serum snare was pretty slow too huh i don't know guys i don't know <laughs> a soul partition is probably better than the serum snare right serum snare as a one soul partition as a three i can see that slip out the back didn't do as much today as i thought it would either like slip out the back protects against like sunfall and all that other all those other goodies. I think we're going to drop a prodigy and go up the fourth partition. <laughs> Is partition that important? Honestly, probably. Probably, right? Now we got more one ofs. Is the deck looking jankier now that we did that? No, probably not. Probably looking a little better, honestly. Um, now that we have more partitions, I don't want to get uh, held up on that legendary land as much. So we're going to go up a... Um, second planes i wouldn't do that if we planned on going up against a lot of mono blue city the empire happens to be really good against hottie Jin, but hottie Jin getting counters that that's going to be a different story if like more people are playing this uh memory version of blue and seat of the empire is going to be even less efficient how do we feel about this we changed it up a little bit i'm kind of feeling a little bit more confident now that we have four soul partitions that's a lot of epic tempo, and that's a lot of things that can commit crimes for the duelist. Maybe I wasn't being as aggressive as I should have been today, although we didn't have a lot of chance to be aggressive, right? Um, maybe, maybe. I'm grabbing all of the things that commit crimes. Uh, I guess counter spells count, right? Targeting opponents, anything they control, that includes cards on the stack right that's what the opponent did with their spell pierce they committed a crime i think so so i guess like the counter on three steps ahead in the spell pierce too uh correct me if i'm wrong of course okay guys yeah definitely let me know what would you add or take out i i'm feeling a little bit more confident with the soul partition but we still gotta call it jank for sure maybe we need a different draw card outside of meeting of minds maybe to actually see the three steps ahead do a thing we needed four of these how many do i have two okay <laughs> I'm not going to be crafting those just yet, um, since I don't play blue very often anyways. Okay, guys. Hey, thanks again for being here. I will see you in the next video.